So, at this point, I'm sure we've all seen the videos on YouTube. Battlefield 5 sucks. Battlefield 5 is broken. Battlefield 5 has all of these issues. But rarely do I actually see solutions given to these problems. Now, as you know, recently I've just hit 1,000 hours played of Battlefield 5. And trust me, I have dealt with a ton of issues with this game. I'm usually the guy that just streams the game and makes highlight videos. But I never really talk about a lot of the problems that go on within it. So I've actually been thinking about making a video like this for a while. I know it's not my normal style of video, but I think it's kind of important to get this information out now. And not necessarily to change Battlefield 5, because I think it's almost too late for that. But potentially changing the next Battlefield that comes in the future and giving this feedback early on now so that something can be done later. So what I've done is I've tried to find the five biggest issues facing Battlefield 5 right now. And I think those issues are number one, game balance, number two, performance, number three, visibility, number four, progression, and number five, anti-cheat. As we know, recently they introduced the 5.2 update, which changed the time to kill for a lot of weapons. They changed that because they felt that players were dying too quickly and getting frustrated. Whilst that may be true for some people and some of the weapons, I feel that the biggest issue is that newer players are joining servers that are unbalanced. Seasoned players will join an unbalanced server and know that it's extremely unbalanced and will leave the game. However, newer players will join the game and not know the reason why they're getting smashed so hard. They'll think that they're just not that good or the game's too hard, but in reality, they just joined a bad team and they'll often just stay in the server on the bad team and the bad team gets worse and worse as more good players leave. People think a team switch button will fix game balance but in fact it will actually make it worse as it did in previous Battlefield games. Now look at what other games have tried to do to combat game balance. They've added in skill based matchmaking. Now my solution to fix game balance is relatively simple. It does require a little bit of coding. Imagine playing on a server where it's clearly unbalanced, the enemy team does not have a chance either attacking or defending, and they're just not having a good time. Players are starting to leave that losing team. So after a certain threshold of amount of points lost and players leaving, the server gets marked for a hero player. A player with a lot of experience will be given the option on the main menu to matchmake into losing servers. If the player chooses to join the losing teams and help them out, over time they can gain unique rewards, additional company coin, specific skins that can only be unlocked after helping X amount of players. This would be similar to the Daisy Hero vs Bandit system, where it was encouraged that players do good things in order to unlock a unique skin for their character that was revered amongst the community. So essentially, over time, the server will be continually balanced by adding hero players to each team as soon as they start losing significantly. This is something that could be implemented in Battlefield 5, but I doubt that it will be at this stage. But hopefully something similar to this can be added to future games to help out in servers where it is severely unbalanced without adding in something as destructive as skill-based matchmaking. Moving on to my next big issue, which I think is performance. Now, I know people on console even have performance issues, but I have a pretty decent PC and I can barely get this game to run at 144 FPS. So I cannot imagine what it's like for some people who have less powerful PCs trying to run this game over 30 or even 60 FPS. Obviously, a lot of people buy Battlefield games for their visual fidelity. They buy them because the game looks beautiful, which it does. However, I think that they might prioritize visual fidelity over performance in some cases. To give you an example, if you go back and play Battlefield 4, that game graphically could stand up to today's standards easily. And I can run that game at 200 FPS constantly on 64 player maps. Now on Battlefield 5, on the lowest settings without making the game look like a potato, I barely get over 120 to 140 FPS. So here's the issue. If you increase the performance, the detail of the game would have to go back to Battlefield 4 standards, right? 
and some people who buy the game for the visual beauty would be disappointed that the game looks worse than a previous iteration. So my solution to this problem would to be have two different modes of the game, a beauty mode and a performance mode. In beauty mode, the game is as it was intended to be. All of the additional assets, all of the high details and grass and long distance rendering, all of that stuff kept in. And when I say performance mode, I don't mean just setting the game settings to low. That's not good enough. I want a bare bones version of the game that doesn't necessarily give you an advantage, but makes it run on your mum's MacBook Air so that players on consoles and on low end PCs can enjoy the game as much as the people with the high end PCs. Now, I'm not saying create Potato World Online. What I'm saying is create something with the quality similar to Battlefield 4 that still looks good, but has much better performance. Now, there's probably a dev watching this, just shaking their head saying, oh my God, does he have any idea what he's talking about? This sort of thing would be a lot of work, which is why I'm mentioning this stuff now. I don't expect this to happen for Battlefield 5, but just bear in mind that performance and accessibility for all players is such a massive deal in today's gaming market, especially if the game is considering esports options. Now let's talk about another issue that is kind of affected by performance as well, is the visibility and customizations of the game. We've all had those moments in Battlefield 5 where the detail of the game is so high that it gets to a point where we can't distinguish what is the environment and what is a player, which is something we never really dealt with in previous games like BF1, BF3 and BF4. I never really had an issue spotting my enemies. I think the reason for this is actually the customizations of the characters. In every single previous Battlefield game, you can tell the class of the enemy that you're facing just from their shadow. In Battlefield 5, I literally can't tell the difference between an enemy and a friendly soldier, let alone what class they are. I think in previous Battlefield games, you conditioned yourself to look for certain features of the enemies within the environment. In Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, for instance, you can spot an assault player's helmet in a bush 300 meters away. Because the characters look the same and you were constantly exposed to how they looked, your brain would automatically lock on to certain features even if they were camouflaged. In future, I really hope they bring the silhouettes of the classes back to Battlefield. For instance, in BF1, the scouts all had capes, the assault players all had helmets with snoods, the medic classes always had crutches, and the support class always had a backpack. And any customizations that are added to the characters would be small things like armbands, helmet covers, tattoos, something that doesn't change how your character actually looks. Whilst also making sure that the colors of the uniforms stay consistent within your teams as well, which is a huge problem with Battlefield 5. Moving on to progression. Now, progression in games is kind of what keeps you playing. Why do you keep logging in every day to play the game? In Battlefield 5, they have the Tides of War, which is where you unlock weapons and skins by completing an activity once a week. It usually takes you maybe a couple of hours and then you're done and you have the new gun. Great. I think Tides of War is actually a decent idea. However, most people literally log on, unlock their new gun, and then never play again until next week's Tides of War. I believe that they need to bring back some sort of leaderboard back into Battlefield. Right now they have unofficial leaderboards on third party websites, but the reason why I started playing Battlefield in the first place was because I wanted to grind to get to the number one spot in the UK for sniper rifles on Battlefield 4. But ever since Hardline, BF1 and BF5 had had no official leaderboards and thus no real reason for people to care about any kind of placement in what they're doing. Now imagine this, unique weapon customizations, charms, or emblems only unlocked for the players who are the top 1% for a certain thing. So hey, you're in the top 1% revives, you get some golden defibrillators or a golden syringe on your emblem. Your top 1% snipers, you get a golden sniper bullet or a golden scope every on your gun that only you have as long as you're in the top 1%. Giving something that people can work towards that they can then flex to everyone else in the game. Again, going back to my hero player rewards. 
getting something unique that only the hero player can get. These will be the incentives for your players to play longer than just the Tides of War rewards. If they're invested in the game, they have to keep coming back in order to keep their 1% placement, or they lose it. I think that giving people the goal of unique rewards will keep people invested in the game and actually want to play it as they have a goal in mind. And finally, we come along to talk about one of the biggest issues in Battlefield 5, which is the anti-cheat and cheating. For some reason, it does feel like nothing is being done about the cheating, and there is just a constant flow of cheaters in the game. Now, as I don't know the inner workings of DICE and how they deal with cheaters, I can't comment on what current systems they're using because I don't know. What confuses me is why they haven't implemented certain systems into the game that a lot of other games have adopted. Even something as simple as right-clicking people's name on the scoreboard or scrolling down to their name on the scoreboard and reporting from there. Or even just a report feature on the menu if you press escape. I don't know why this hasn't been implemented and why you have to find people's origin profiles which are often hidden behind cryptic usernames and hidden private accounts that you can't find. For now, the only thing I can say is just try and make the process of reporting a player easier. It seems so far-fetched that we have to leave the game in order to report someone. And in most cases, I don't think people are willing to do that. Ultimately, I think that Battlefield 5 is a decent game with a lot of potential. And with certain changes, even minor changes now, will still pay dividends in the future for future Battlefield games. So if you agree with some of the solutions that I mentioned in this video, give it a like. And if you disagree and think that my solutions are trash, give it a dislike and comment down below what you think they should do to combat some of these issues. I want to start a constructive discussion within the community to actually improve the game as opposed to just bashing all the problems without providing any feedback. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe in the future I will give you my ideas for what I think the best battlefield would be like. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.